Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So, in previous episodes, we have been building this computer. So currently, this can store a program in here. And we can add numbers. We get a nice debugging display that's telling us what it's doing. So in this case, it's storing in R0 the value of 832 plus 34. Um, the 832 came from R3, so it came from this register. So uh, 832 plus 34 is uh, whatever it is, and we get 866 up here. So, um, so this is good. Um, the next kind of incremental improvement that we can make to this computer is probably being able to more easily assemble programs, I think. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can use an external assembler program, and I have a really good idea on what to use for that, but um, I'm wondering how far we can get with just this program and not having to switch to another one. Um, so to that end, I think the problematic part of the circuit is probably right here. So I say this is problematic because we're going to have some difficulties adding multiple different instruction formats and multiple different um, instructions to this right here. Probably what we want to do is start building an embedded circuit that does this. Um, so actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this. Um, I'm not sure I need the clock input. I mainly just need this. And I think I'm going to start working on an embedded circuit for this. So we have a couple of inputs. Um, I'd like to expand this a little bit. What I would like to do is have multiple inputs, one for each instruction. So maybe this could be um, just a single bit. And let's call this add. What would be nice is if we could enter in, say, a pair of registers and push one of the operation buttons, and it would automatically clock the output as well. So let's see, we need an output for the instruction. And I'm going to start abbreviating just because. And the other output will be our, um, well, it's not really a clock. It's more like a enter um, or a store signal, maybe. Maybe that. In order to properly build this, I think we need another instruction. Um, uh, let's not, we don't need to abbreviate this one. It's short enough. Um, so we would have an add instruction and we'd have a jump instruction. Um, Jump instruction uh, just changes the program counter to a stored value. Um, I'm going to change this to immediate, or just the abbreviation M. Um, and I'm going to split this one apart. So this is going to be source, and this is, uh, for now, just two bits. And then we've got... Oh, uh, Test. And actually, it kind of makes more sense for these to be the other way around. Um, so what we need is the ability to turn this into a number at the same time as either one of these should pulse the output. So to be able to pulse the output from either one of them, that kind of sounds like an or. This or that, right? So let's use that, and we can wire both of these into here, and have this go out here. Um, but how do we encode this as a number? Because really, this would just be a single bit right now, either add or jump, right? So how do we do that? Um, well, in our plexers here, we have a priority encoder. And what a priority encoder does, oh, interesting. Yeah. Let's play with this a little bit, because I, I have a feeling we don't even need this. OK, 
because it hasn't any output. Let's switch this back around. And this is, um, oh, actually, no. Uh, what we would have is this, this here. And then for now, let's just put this to an output so we can see what it does. <laughs> what was the problem? Huh? Um, I think um, we'll have to double check this, but for now, this will work. Let's just move this over, and I think it goes up like that. Okay, um, what? Oh, um, let's do this and like this. Uh, is it two bits? This is two bits. Okay, finally we can test this. Okay, so if we have this, then the clock will come on. If we have this, then both of them come on. Excellent. Um, and actually, you know, while we're doing this, let's make it three bits, because then we have room for um, eight different instructions. And I think eight instructions is probably the limits of being able to assemble instructions within this program. Uh, once we get past eight instructions, we're quite certain to, to need more robust solution. Uh, let's make the jump be one of the last instructions. Um, so if we, oh yeah, uh, zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, yay, okay. So if this is active, then it stores it um, and it outputs a zero. And if this is active, then it stores it and it outputs a seven. So that's useful. And we've got tons of room for more instructions. So that's awesome. All right, so now let's use this bit uh, in our instruction somehow. Um, we have a source and a destination. Um, and then we have these unused bits here. So let's, let's use three of those bits and then, yeah, that's correct, I think. And then we move this down and we set this to five bits. Okay, and now we can input our number from here into there. And let's just move all of this over here somewhere. Uh, let's do that. Let's just put this over here for now. Okay. Uh, and then we can actually move this a little closer. Um, let's move this up. Uh, let's move this over. There we go. There we go. Uh, let's move this up to here. There. Okay. And if we do this, then you see uh, we've modified the instruction to have the seven in it. And if we do this, then it's still zero, which is our current instruction. Okay, this is looking promising. So we have room to expand up to eight instructions um, and the number will be uh, encoded. And I didn't explain what a priority encoder does. A priority encoder just takes the first input and outputs it as a number. And it also has this any output that uh, just indicates that um, one of the inputs is active. So I think this is pretty good. Um, let's save as, and let's call this our assembler. Um, circuit uh, ASM, let's make it uh, this will probably need to be at least six wide. Okay, let's add that to this circuit. So we don't need this anymore. There we go. Yeah, so the inputs are kind of a jumbled mess. Let's, oh, and um, maybe immediate is not the best name for this because maybe you have no idea what an immediate is. Um, let's just call this value because 
you know, it's some value or some number that we can input as part of the uh, instruction. So let's order our inputs. Uh, let's put, uh, let's keep value at the top. Um, destination, then source, then our instructions that we can do. Are our outputs in the correct order? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Oh, this should be dest. Okay, and we have our store signal. Okay. So as our first instruction, we have this. Let's try making the first instruction a jump. Let's say we want to jump to three. Um, source and destination don't matter. So we can jump. And let's see. Yes, it did indeed store that into our program. Awesome. So another thing that I would like to add is kind of a programming mode. So. I wonder what the best way to do that would be. Because um, if we were to implement the jump instruction, the issue that we'll find is that if we're executing the program as we're entering it in, the program counter will immediately jump. So it'll be impossible for us to store the jump instruction at the correct location in the program. Um, Currently, that's not a problem because all we have implemented is the add instruction and there's no changing of the program counter yet. And another thing that might be really nice is to be able to see in our debugging output the program as we're entering it. So we'd be able to see down here what the program's going to do based on uh, what we've entered into the inputs. So it'd be kind of nice to bypass the EEPROM and go directly to the to the decoder when we're in programming mode. So hmm. We have these switches and we could have one for mode. And we could have a little light that indicates that we're programming. And we could wire this up to there. So yeah, if we're if we're programming, then that light will come on and it'll let us know that we're programming. Otherwise, it defaults to off, so we don't mess with anything. Let's add an input for that. Uh, where do we add it? Let's add it over here. Um, we don't want our store clock to pulse at all unless we're in programming mode. So let's do that. Uh, we would do that with an AND gate. Uh, put the mode at the top. Okay, so how do we implement the bypass? We want these flipped. Hmm. What this? That's kind of ugly. All right. So if we're not in programming mode, we can execute our instructions, and we've messed up our program somehow. Um, if we are in programming mode, uh, let's set this back to what it was. Um, don't remember what it was. I think this was 100. Uh oh. Let's fix that. Um, these should be decimal. There. That's better. That's better. Okay. Um, this should be 100, I think. And destination should be R1. Source should be R0. We're in programming mode. 
So R1 will become 100. That looks correct. And we're adding. Okay, I think that's right. So if we turn off programming mode and we execute the instruction, yeah, I think that's what the program was doing before. Excellent. Okay, so we have a way of entering in a more complicated program with multiple different instructions. And we have a way of bypassing so that we can see what the instruction will do right away. Um, this here is starting to get a little bit complicated though. Well, one thing that we could do for now, and this is probably a temporary solution, is just to um, hide this inside of the decoder. So let's do that. Let's copy this and let's uh, add this in here. So, so we'll use prog as the uh, as a programming mode, um, and then we want a bypass. And in here, we can put the bypass down below. Okay, let's do this. Put that up there. Down like that, and then we can put that up like that. Save. Uh, we definitely have to order our inputs. Um, let's put prog on top, bypass under that, and then instruction down below. Okay, save. Okay, so we don't have this anymore. We have uh, we have our instruction. We have a bypass, and we have our programming input. Excellent. Now we can move this back over. Uh, I'll leave it at that for now. All right. Okay. Let's test that out. Excellent. Okay. So we have a bit of a more user-friendly interface for uh, programming this. Um, we have a programming mode which allows us to see exactly what the instruction that we're setting up will do. And we have the beginnings of a jump instruction. And I think this is a good place to, to leave it off for now. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you have any feedback whatsoever, please leave a comment. Uh, I hope this has been interesting. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Have yourself a great day. Bye.